Hey everyone, welcome to week four of 3D Basics. Uh, this week we're going to kind of recap and revisit some of the things, a lot of the things we talked about last week. So last week we, we did the X-Wing. Um, we spent a lot of time kind of going sort of start to finish with the X-Wing, um, following a certain set of steps to get there. Uh, but today we're going to look at modeling from a little bit different angle, sort of like taking different approaches to model the same thing. Um, because like knowing where to start and how to start is like one of the, the biggest, like, uh, I think is one of the trickier things to be able to wrap your head around be like, well, how, like, I don't even know where to begin. So, uh, we're going to like model a very simple chair. It won't take us nearly as long, but I'll just show you like a couple different schools of thought when it comes to, to modeling, because there's, there's not one right answer to create something in 3d. A lot of it has to do with like your workflow, like your personal workflow, the style you're trying to go for, what the end result is that you're going for, whether it's an animation or whether it's, you're creating something for a video game or whether you're just making a still piece of art. All of those kind of things influence and can impact how you model something. So we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. We'll spend more time on lighting. We'll spend more time on materials. We'll look a little bit at um, doing you understanding what UV is as well. If we're using image textures or image materials and things like that. Um, so it's it's more modeling, more lighting, more materials, and a little bit of UV. So, um, over in Blender, here we are. So, uh, let's, let's model a chair. And so m how my brain works is, uh, w what I, I, I kind of, I, I'm the kind of modeler who starts with like the center or like the anchor of something like what's in the middle. And I build out from that. Sometimes maybe I'll start from the bottom and I'll go like build something from the bottom and, and stretch it out up to the top. But kind of how I'm, that's my mind usually works where I'm starting in the middle. So uh, if I'm going to make like a chair, a very basic chair, I'm probably going to start with like the seat of the chair. And maybe I'll bring the legs down and I'll bring the back of the chair up from the center. So if I was making a chair, I'd probably start with a cube. So let's, let's talk through a couple different ways to make things. So like the very simplest way, um, to make a chair would be just to use the basic primitives. So like how you would have done with assignment one. So like I take this cube and I S Z there's the seat. And then I shift a add another cube and I shift, uh, or sorry, S for scale shift Z to scale it this way. I just realized I don't, I always, always forget to turn my keyboard shortcuts on. Sorry. Let's go. And uh, maybe I'll do uh, an orthographic view here. I'll go seven for top down. I'll turn on my wireframe. I want to move this cube here, G, move it there. And I want to shift D, duplicate it there, shift D, duplicate it here. These are the legs. And then I'll grab these and I'll uh, do a side view and I'll uh, GZ move these down here. And then maybe I'll take these two again and I'll uh, shift D and then Z, slide them up like this. And then maybe I'll take this one again, shift D, I don't know. And then RX 90 and then just make sure it's lined up here like that. And then probably front view as well. Okay, look. So this is <laughs> this is basic chair with just primitives. Um, now this is acceptable for many uses. You know, this like maybe uh, you're just wanting a piece of art, or maybe this is something in the background of another scene, and you just need whatever like. You just need something quick and dirty. This is fine. Maybe if you want to get a little bit fancier, you can shift D Y like do this a couple of times. Shift D Y shift D Y like this shift D Y, you know, not perfect, but there we go. It's a chair with a back. 
and then you got a bunch of cubes. So that's one way to do it. Uh, here's here's your organizing tip of the day. So we talked about making collections uh, last week. We, we can do that again here. So j don't forget up here top right of your scene collection here. Uh, we can make a new one and just call uh, it comes in as collection two. We can double click here. Excuse me. And we'll call this uh, primitive chair. And just I'm going to hold down one or I'm going to you can click and drag over all these cubes and stick them in primitive chair if you want. Now the the thing about um, organizing things in a collection like this is that um, we can't select move them all as as a unit. Um, oops, undo. I want Z. I want solid mode. So a lot of times. Uh, what you can do is, uh, and what happens in, in other kind of creative programs and like programming in general is uh, you, we can parent, uh, meaning we can have one thing control other things. So like one thing is the parent and we call everything else the children. So um, the, the parent controls the children. <laughs> so what we could do, so like let, uh, we could call this, this one seat. And what we can do is uh, we can select all of these cubes. So I'm selecting all of these ones here. You can select them like this. And then select the seat last. So hold down the shift key and then click on seat. You can even you can click on your object here as well. Click that. So you have to, the coloring and the selection is important here. Um, you can see that all of the other smaller cubes, all the other like legs in the back are this like darker orange. And the seat is this lighter orange. This the one that we selected last is this like kind of yellowish orange. We can also see that's a little lighter color blue over here. That is called the active selection. So all of this is your is being selected, but the last thing you do is called the active selection. And so when you have multiple things selected like this, and you want to parent, uh, Control P. Uh, we can say set parent to object. So it's it's setting the parent for all of these other things, all of these uh, darker ones, all these other cubes, these darker orange. It's setting it to, if I do control P, setting parent to object. So meaning the one that we have selected, the active selection, which would be the seed. So we do this. Uh, now you can see a couple things have happened. Um, up here in the top right, uh, all you, it appears as if all the other cubes went away and we're just left with seat but you can see there's a little icon here that this shows that there's 11 meshes inside of here so this is a little drop down you can twirl this open and you can see that all of these cubes are now within the seat they're parented to the seat so now if i move the seat if i just click on seat here i can g move all of it together and you can also see that um a little tiny black and white line has been drawn from uh, each of these different objects to the center of the seat. This is just also another indicator that it's parented. Do, do, do. Now that all that does each of these does have individual control as well. So like if I click on this one and I G move it, I can still move these individually because they're nothing is parented to these, but they're all parented to the seat. So you can see that now they all kind of move together. So again, this is like a pretty honestly, this is a very sloppy way to do this, but I'm just, I'm showing you the example of parenting, how to parent things. It's being controlled by the other thing. So like, and parent parenting affects your location your rotation and your scale, the basic trans transformation. So if I scale the seat, it's gonna scale everything else with it. If I rotate the seat, it's gonna rotate everything else with it. Now I'll, sh I'll show you one other thing. Let me undo a bunch, undo. Hopefully I have enough undos here. I'm gonna undo my parenting as well. Undoing until it's no longer parented. Okay, it looks like I don't have enough undos. So this is actually a good, a good lesson. So, uh, to select, we, we can select all of these things again here and select all of these. And actually, the I didn't mean to select the light. I just want all of these here. You can remove a parent. Uh, control parent was set parent, uh, but alt 
p is clear parent. So we can clear parent or clear parent and keep transform. We didn't really do either, so uh, it doesn't make a difference at this point. So if we clear parent, we can see that now, once again, we have all of these things separate. Uh, oftentimes what people will do is they'll create a new object to parent things to as like a controlling object. And um, one thing that we can do in 3D is create a, an empty. And you maybe saw that before, but if we shift A, open our add menu again, uh, we have down here empties. So you have, there's like different options here, but they're all essentially the same thing. It's just like a nothing. It's, it's, it's a symbol, but it's not part of your model at all. So like if you add in plain axes here, it's just like a, a little like symbol, but it doesn't, it's not anything, but it shows up as an object in your scene. So like if I moved this empty over here, it's signified by these, the, these three lines, these axes. It's called empty. But what I can do is I can select all of these parts of my chair, then shift click on empty. So it's the act, whoops, but see, so here it didn't actually quite work because cube is my active selection. I don't want that. I want all of my, this to be the active selection. And I'm gonna control click on empty. And then now that is the active selection. So anyway, so I can do that. I can do control P, set parent to object. And now all of these are parented to empty. Oops, and so like, uh, it wasn't in my primitive chair collection here, so if I grab empty and put it in here, it all kind of falls into place. So you can see that now with my empty, I can rotate the empty, I can move the empty, and you might even call this like chair control. But one thing to be aware of is that because it's not like near, it wasn't part of like inside the chair, I moved it to the side, you can see that it's doing all of these things relative to the position of its parent. So that's just another thing to be aware of, that you kind of want your parent to be like inside of it, so it's a little easier to control. Um, same with scale, like it's not gonna scale, it's gonna scale and also kind of move to the right. So something to be aware of. Undo, undo, undo. Let's hopefully I have enough undos here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so yeah, empties, shift A. You know, these all do the same thing. So like if I do cube here, it's not actually a cube, it's just like the shape of a cube here that you can use to parent things to. Undo, undo. Okay, primitive chair. Oh yeah, so I suppose I should actually do this. C is my actual selection, control P, set parent to object. Now I have C here. Okay, now I'm gonna G and move this over here. So that's one way to do a chair. <laughs> Here's, here's way two to do a chair with modeling tools. So I'm gonna go, we're still in object mode. Shift A, let's add a new cube. It starts out pretty similar. Uh, S, Z, scale it in the Z like this, cool. Now let's, let's edit, tab. Uh, let's, I'm gonna control R loop cut here. So I got so this requires a little bit more thought. What I want to do is I want to create like little squares in the corners that I will then extrude to be the legs. So uh, I think I want to, how am I going to do this? Yeah, let's do it like this. So I'm going to do two cuts like this, but I don't want to slide them. So I'm just going to right click. I'll do the same thing on this side. Uh, Control R for loop cut. I'm gonna middle mouse wheel up once. So instead of doing one loop cuts, I'm doing two loop cuts like this. And click here, but I don't want it to slide, so I'm gonna right click so it's dead in the center. Great. So I've got four uh, like squares that I can use to extrude the legs, but they're really large right now. So what I'll probably do is, uh, let me turn on X-ray select right here. Shortcut for that is Alt-Z. Nope, that actually brings up something for my graphics card. So I'll just click it here. And let's do my top down view, which is seven on my number pad. Or you can also go view, viewpoint, top here to get top down view. And I want to select all the way through here and I'm going to S scale, mm, no. Uh, 
you know what I want to do? So actually, I'm going to grab all of these like this, and I'm going to SY, scale them this way like that. And I'm going to kind of look at my grid so that I'm getting it pretty close. I'm I want to get it about two boxes worth apart. I'm going to click to apply that, and then I'm going to grab these ones, SX, scale these out here. So it's about the same size, so they're pretty square. And I'm going to left click to apply that. All right. So now I'm going to go three for face select. I'm going to grab these. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to grab these four faces on the bottom. And then I'm going to e extrude these down to be a chair, to be the legs. Oops, they got to be too big. So I'm going to just GZ move these up a little bit. Cool, there's my chair legs. And then uh, let's work on the back of the chair now. I'm going to go hit the Z key to change this to solid mode. Whoops. Why is it in solid mode? Oh, I, it's because I am in solid mode. I want to turn off x-ray. So I'm going to grab these three faces here. I'm holding on the shift key with my face selection on. Don't forget, I'm in edit mode to do all this. I'll E extrude this up like that. So there's you know the back of a chair. We could make this a little bit fancier, you know. Um, so let's let's say we wanted to to cut it out like this, you know. What could we do? Uh, you know, we could add some loop cuts, but let's just make this like a little bit fancier. Let's um, let's just have let's have it be like open. No, let's not have it be open back. Yeah, let's let's add a, let's add like just two loop cuts maybe. Um, Control R. For a loop cut so let's think about this we want a loop cut here but how many bars do we want do we want so if i do it like this i've got to kind of visualize i'm going to try to point out my screen but obviously you can't see um if we go like every other if, so if we imagine the the lines on the the bars on the outside will be there then a space then bars and then a space in the middle sure let's do it like this so i'm going to click here to apply that uh, but I don't want it to slide, so I want to right click. Um, the other thing we'll, let's do is we'll need a, uh, some loop cut. So, like, just so you can um, visualize it here, I'm going to do a three for face select. So, this is going to be a bar, and this will be a. Whoops, I got to hold do shift. I'm going to click this one, shift. This one will be a bar, this one will be a bar, this one will be a bar. So, we'll kind of cut out these spaces in between here. I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right, so let's go back to uh, loop cut, control R. Uh, we're going to do, I'm going to click and I am going to slide this one up here because we need something on the top there. And I'm going to do it again. Control R, click and slide down on the bottom here. Great. Cool. All right, so now we actually need to cut these things out. This is, this is something new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go three for face select. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to hit the delete key and say delete faces. So now there's a hole there. You see I can actually click through here, so if I click that one, delete faces. Now it's deleted on both sides. Let's just delete all these first. So I'm going to delete this one here, delete faces, delete faces, delete, delete. Okay, so we have these holes in here, but like that's not actually good geometry because, you know, you can see that it's hollow and that things are perfectly fat. So we need to kind of like bridge, connect these holes. Um, there's, an, there's a pretty easy way to do that. Let's do two for edge select. And remember, we can select loops. So we want to select the loop kind of around this, this front side here. So if I hold down the Alt key and I click this loop, you can see that it grabbed all four of those sides. And I also want to select at the same time the loop in the back. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key and then Alt Shift one of these and then alt click that loop. So now we've got, you can see highlighted in orange, there's this loop on the back. And at the same time I have this loop on the front selected. And now we want to like connect these loops. We want to create geometry between these loops. It's pretty easy. You right click and down here. Oh, here it is. Bridge edge loops. This one right here, bridge edge loops. And if we click that, you can see that now it's created new faces in between those two things, so now it's solid. 
So you got to have two edge loops selected. It helps if they have the same amount of edges, four and four, and it kind of creates a tunnel between them. So uh, let's do the, that again really quickly. Uh, so I've got two for edge select. I'm going to alt click. Oops, nope. I got to make sure I'm getting the right one. Uh, I was control clicking. I want alt click this loop. I'm going to shift click back here, alt shift there, right click bridge edge loops, doing it again here on the back, clicking this one. Alt click here, I've got this loop selected on the back. Sh holding down the shift key, I'm alt clicking this loop, right click, bridge, edge loops, boom. Okay. I'm realizing I'm. this is like the right view, which is fine. I'm gonna go back to my edge, select, or sorry, my x-ray mode, one for vertex. I wanna like scale I'm going to scale this SY just a little bit so it's kind of the, about the same size as the other one, the other ones. I'm going to do the same thing here. This SY. Scale this down. Okay, cool. Uh, back into turning off x ray. So, tab. So, look, here's a chair, and this is one piece. So, this is just chair. This is definitely like the more. Uh, obviously it wasn't as fast as doing this, as doing this chair, but this looks nicer and is, is a better model because it's, it's one piece in general. It's better to have it, have pieces like a chair, <laughs> you know, a chair in your house, the chair you're sitting on is, is pretty much one piece. Like when you, when you pick up your chair, you pick up the whole thing. So, uh, when you're modeling, it's it's a good idea to kind of follow that idea. So, and now we can we can add some details pretty easily too. So, we talked about this a little bit, but uh, a, a little bit before. But um, things don't have perfectly ninety degree angles um, because if you sat down on this, you'd cut your butt and you'd cut your legs. So, like we can add a little bit of detail if we wanted. So, uh, if we took let me go two for edge select. What we could do is we could take these edges around here like this. We can shift click and grab a bunch of these. We probably wouldn't want to do the whole loop because then it would grab around the back here, but we can we can add a little bevel here like this. Let's see what this does. So if I do uh, control B to bevel, we can add just like a little a little detail right here like this open up our bevel menu and kind of change the segments, make it two, three like this. So it's just a little rounded. You can see that it, it actually, because we grabbed against a, an edge here, it, it created a little gap. So maybe that's not, not the best thing to do. Maybe what we can do is um, we can add another loop cut here like this and slide this back there and see what this does. So let's go two for edge select, grab these ones. Click, click, click down the line to here, not selecting that one. And then why don't we also uh, like just grab these ones down the front here too, just to kind of see what this looks like. So we're just going to kind of add like a little bevel, control B to add it like this and just kind of see what this does. So I've got right now it's, if you do one cut, it looks like this. If you add two, three or segments, I shouldn't say cuts, set three segments. So it just makes it like a little bit rounder. We're adding a little bit more geometry, a little bit more detail. On this front edge, it, it doesn't quite work because it does more of more of it right along the top, but that's fine. Um, and you know, you could go, you could do it really big here. Like you could get these two and uh, you could control B bevel like this and just make it really rounded like that. Sure. So again, like just a little bit more detail looks great. Okay, final way that I'll show you. So yeah, and even just, you can right click shade smooth, kind of just make those edges a little bit. Yeah, it's still not quite right, shade flat. Okay, and this is one object here, so there's a chair. Method three. So this is this is a method three is pro probably will feel the the strangest, but um, once you kind of once you understand how the subdivision surface modifiers work, you can really use it to your advantage. So um, 
starting starting pretty much the same. Shift A. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this to get to kind of the same point. All right, so I got to here. I, I chose to do just one uh, one loop cut and or one kind of bar in the middle here instead of two. Um, so let me just click connect to these and do these loop cuts. So once again, so I'm I clicked one edge, Alt clicking that loop cut. I'm gonna shift click this edge, Alt shift there, right click bridge edge loops same thing over here this one whoops uh i guess it doesn't matter shift clicking shift alt click there right click bridge edge loops cool okay so right now i'm going to add the subsurface modifier onto this object so this this is this is like we'll, i'll call this one chair 2 I'm gonna call this subsurf chair. And what a subdivision surface modifier is, so remember, with with my chair selected, I can go to the modifiers properties tab here. I can add a modifier. And subdivision surface is under generate. Here's the generate column subdivision surface. Okay, so immediately this looks bad. So if I go tab into object mode, like this is like some sort of funky chair. But what a subdivision surface does is it adds polygons. It's adding detail and it sort of like rounds out the edges and the vertices that you have. So looking at this so looking let's look at the openings here so you can see that um it's attempting to kind of you know make them a little bit more oval but it's still kind of fitting within the bounds of of that uh of those vertices i had before so actually I, i'm in object mode right now as i'm looking at this if i go tab into edit mode you can kind of see you can see where um you know, the existing vertices are. So you can see that it's like really trying to kind of cut this corner, meet in the middle, it's cutting this corner again here, and so on. And uh, looking at our the actual modifier over here, you can see we, there's a couple of things that's happening. Levels viewport and levels render. So we're looking in the viewport right now, and it is subdividing one time here in our viewport. If I if we were to render, it would actually subdivide twice. So that's the difference between these numbers. So if I click up, tick up levels in viewport, you can see that it's added more geometry. It's not quite as jumpy. It's not quite as jagged. So I can even you know go three. You can see there's even more detail. You can go four. Um, pretty much this this is going to be too much detail. This is more detail than you need because there's a handy thing that I, I actually already kind of showed you a minute ago, which is um, shade smooth. And if I tab here, so looking here in, we're just in regular solid mode. We're, I've got one level of subdivision on a subdivision modifier here. You can see the polygons kind of reflecting. And that's because it's, it's calculating the reflections of every polygon accurately. But what Shade Smooth does, if I right click on my object here and go Shade Smooth, is it's trying to kind of trick the camera, or trick us, trick the computer into making this look smooth. So it's, it's trying to kind of fake the way the light is bouncing off of these surfaces to kind of hide the seams between the polygons. So with one level of subdivision service modifier, it's like not quite working. It looks a little weird. You can see that there's still some strange angles in here. But if I tick this up to two, we're getting a little bit closer. It's looking a little bit better. And if I get it to three, it's probably gonna look pretty darn smooth. Now, uh, you know, we'll probably keep it to two now. 
but now let's let's talk about how we can actually manipulate what this is doing. So like, for example, let's talk about the legs. So like, obviously, the the legs, <laughs> we wouldn't want the legs to look like that. So what we can do is we can try to add cuts or we can add geometry add points in here to kind of influence where this is kind of smoothing and averaging out. So for example, let's let's take each of these three, each of these four legs as a different case. So what I can do is I can control R and I can add a loop cut here on uh, the bottom. And you can see that as I add a loop cut, it kind of lengthens it out a little bit. And you can you can see that as I move these down, and up that it's kind of changing where it's averaging. So if I, if I add a loop cut all the way up here at the very top, um, you can see it's gonna pretty much make that flat. That's that's actually not the best way to do that. But if I go loop cut and I add another one down here, like, yeah, that's making the bottom a little more rounded like this. So like um, I could, you could, you know, click and add one near the bottom to have a little bit rounded. Um, or you know you can GZ just slide it in so it's like pretty close right there. Obviously we don't want to like drag it over because now we're creating like an inverted situation here. But that's one way you could do it. So the other thing we can do is uh, we can designate these edges on the bottom, these four edges here, to be a crease. Um, so is it in here? Yes edge crease. So with, with these edges selected, these four on the bottom, we can right click and say edge crease. And it'll give you like a little uh, option to kind of drag here. But you can drag it all the way up and then it'll eventually kind of click into place and you can say yep there's my edge crease and you, you can if you can open up your edge crease uh, menu here and change the edge crease factor but if we want like rounded and flat a rounded and flat edge on the bottom we can do it like that um, the keyboard shortcut to do that is uh, is shift nope control E no what is it I already forgot uh, edge crease shift E yeah so it is shift E Oops. What am I what am I doing? I'm doing shift A. Shift E. There we go. And you can add an edge crease like that. So you can change like the 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 sharpness of it. And and you, you can see that it's it's then it changes those edges to purple. That's like a signal that it is this is a crease in the subdivision surface modifier. Um so like here, we can take this front edge here. Uh, I'm turning off X ray. Turn it take this front edge and we can do the same thing. Shift E add a crease. And I guess that's not quite working, is it? So how would we do this here? We might want to, if I turn on, if I turn on X-ray, and this is something you kind of have to play with, but like if I want these, maybe we want this around here to be a crease. Oops, not that one. I want this one. If I do shift E, is that, oh yeah, okay, there we go. So you kind of have to find the right spot. So if I don't want this quite as rounded, you know, you can grab those four. Turn off x-ray so we can see it a little better. And like here, oh, so here's a good spot. So let's turn on x-ray again. So like along the, along the, oh, I had one selected in the back for some reason. But like these ones along here, so kind of along where your butt would be. Like this can be a crease, shift E. So it kind of can suck that in a little bit. Whoops. Control. Whoops. Oh gosh, what am I doing? Undo. Shift E. Yeah, suck that in. And then you probably want to do here, this one. Shift E. Yeah, it's it's a little tricky. So you got to find the right balance. So like the other option then, if I didn't want to do, uh, do a crease there, I could add a loop cut here. So if I do Control R, we can add a loop cut here and drag this down. So that's another way to kind of cinch in the bottom there. Just add a loop cut. Okay, and like what to do about this. Um, so we probably don't want it to be quite as rounded. So maybe I'll add a loop cut here. Oops, uh, maybe I wanted to do two. Control R, middle mouse wheel up like this. 
Yeah. Same thing over here. Control R, middle mouse wheel. Right click, Control R, middle mouse wheel. Click, right click. Just make it a little more rounded. I don't know. So, a, f a few ways to do it. And like this is, you know, this is like a little bit more of a rounded situation here. So like, again, the shading is not perfect, but uh, this is something that you can dial in. And this, again, we're, we're this is pretty basic, uh, pretty basic modeling here with these. So we've got these three chairs. Let's up, let's up that one more time. The other trick you can do is, so like the one thing that's bugging me is I can still see these, these things here. Maybe what I'll do Okay, <laughs> never satisfied. Um, let me just add like another couple loop cuts here like this. Oh shoot, undo. Control R, mouse wheel up, left click, right click. There we go. Control R. Control R. I don't know. Okay, calling that good. Whew. So maybe smoothness is not something that you're going for. Maybe that's not your style. Um, I am the kind of person who does, I, I kind of like to try to go for some sort of photorealism. But, you know, n not all of that is achieved through your model anyway. Um, so it's, you'll, you'll find your style, you'll find your personal style and you can't be afraid to start over. Um, because honestly, like the, the start, the setting up your project, um, and setting yourself up for success is something that takes practice, but it's, it's also important to, especially as your projects get bigger and bigger, you want to make sure you're kind of setting it up the way you want it to, the way you need it to. And it'll come. It just takes takes time. It takes practice. Okay, so let's add some lights in here. Let's enough of this. Let's let's talk about lighting and materials a little bit more. Um, so let's go to. I want to go to render preview. I'm going to go to this one over here. This is render preview. So all of my chairs are facing backwards. That's fine. Um, I'm going to grab all of these. I'm going to grab this. Oops, shift click this, shift click this, and GZ, move these all up a little bit. Let's shift A, I want to add, shift A, add a plane, and uh, S, scale it up, just so we can see what we're doing here. So we can see uh, some shadows and stuff. Okay, 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 okay. Anybody watching Kanto? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, lighting. So, again... Uh, lighting is, there's, there's no like perfect science to it. It's just, uh, it's an art. <laughs> um, but think about how you would light if you are a photographer or you are, uh, a videographer, how would you, how would you light a scene or how would you light an interview? Um, three point lighting is, is like a great place to start. Um, I usually think, you know, point lights are okay. Um, they're, they're quick and dirty. So this is a point light that's by default in your scene here. Um, but I, I'm more of a fan of, of area lights and that's again, just my style. So if, if I were lighting these chairs, may, maybe I will leave, leave these, this point light in the back, but I want to, uh, shift a, I want to add a new light in here and I want to make an area light. And I'm going to kind of G move it this way. I'm going to just kind of try to eyeball it and point it at something. Actually, let's G move it this way. Let's point it towards, towards that chair there. Okay. Uh, area light. And I'm just going to make my area light a little bigger. So let me go to my light properties here, my object data properties. Um, let's, let's change it to a rectangle, actually. So let's make it like this big. Uh, the power by default is 10 watts, which clearly is not even anything visible. So let's change this to 1,000. So you can get a little a little better sense of the light there. Yes. Okay, good. Very cool. 
Um, so in, in, in three-point lighting, for, I, I started talking about three-point lighting and then totally forgot. Three-point lighting includes having three lights. You have your key light, which is your main light that is kind of lighting your subject or your scene. You have a fill light, which fills in any shadows created by the key light. And then you have a rim light, which comes from behind. And it is just a little bit of light on the back of your subject to kind of separate them from the background. So like this could be my key light here, key. This will be my uh, backlight or rim light back. And then we'll do one more that's fill. So uh, we're gonna, I'm just gonna shift D, duplicate this light, move it over here and point it over here like this ish. And uh, can I rotate it just a little bit? Yeah, sure. And uh, usually you want your, the, like the, this is, if this is 100%, this one you want to be uh, 50%. So we'll make this 500 Watts. And then this one can be 25%. So that would be 250 Watts. And that's sort of like, you know, this is like a baseline. <laughs> this is like, maybe if you don't know where to start with lighting, start with that. Um, but you can make it a little bit more exciting. Like you could change the color of our backlight. You could make this just a little bit more dramatic. Maybe it's like just kind of a little red, a little red hue. And this is also assuming that they're like equidistant from your subject. So this one might, you might even move a little bit closer. Whoa, whoa where I, I'm having such a hard time with my camera right now. There we go. Um, or like, you know, maybe you want to get some reflection off of this light. So maybe this is a little bit brighter, but it's a little bit further away. So it, it, that also kind of depends on your material. Um, let's get the, let's get our camera over here. So remember to move your camera to your viewport. Um, if you have a number pad, you can do control alt and then zero on your number pad to move your camera to where your active view is. Uh, but if not, let's see if I can remember where it is in the menus. Uh, view, cameras, set, nope, that's not it. Oh, align view. Active camera to view. That's, here it is, view, align view, active camera to view. Okay. Um, I'm going to change the focal length a little bit. So yeah, so like looking at my scene here, let me also just change my world. I always like to change my world color to black if I don't have anything in the background. So you can kind of see that it's like, oh yeah, I'm getting a little bit of pink shine, but we're a well lit, whatever, etc. cetera. Um, now, they're looking at uh, how this is rendering. So you can see that like the shadows are like a little weird and a little funky. Um, this is because we are using, there are two ways, there are two render engines they're called in Blender. We've been using just like the basic one, the, uh, the viewport renderer, which is called Eevee. I don't know if it's named after the Pokemon, uh, but there is a, a better renderer, uh, that we can use that's, uh, but it's a little bit more taxing on your computer. It's a little slower. So uh, only turn this on if you're interested in it and if you feel like your computer can handle it. Um, but to do so, uh, up here, uh, right, see where my mouse is. We have render properties. It looks like the back of a DSLR camera right here. Render engine is set to EV right here. We can change this to cycles. And cycles is like a little bit fancier. And the difference here is that um, Cycles uh, does ray tracing. Um, and I'm getting into the weeds a little bit with a technical jargon, so I apologize. Uh, but ray tracing is actually, it's calculating the rays of light coming from each light, and it's doing the math and seeing where it's hitting, where it's bouncing, like the actual like rays. What Eevee does is it just kind of like fakes it. It says like, okay, if there's an object here and a, and a light over here, it's going to kind of cast a shadow like this. Or this is actually doing the rays of light <laughs> and like trying to do realistic shadows. So looking at the shadows here, you can see that these are like much nicer, more realistic shadows compared to if I switch back to Eevee. 
you can see that they're just like a little chunkier, not as realistic. So you know, this is this is something that you'll kind of you'll learn to appreciate the uh, the the how cycles does it better if you're going for realism. Um, we'll 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 have we'll probably have a whole lecture about rendering because it's it's a it's a kind of a complicated thing, um, and it takes time to kind of under to get what you want out of it to really like tweak it. But for now, just understand that, that there's two different render engines. Cycles is the fancy one that works, makes your computer work a little harder. EV is the basic one. And both are fine for this class. Absolutely. You're, you're more than welcome to stay on EV. Um, so that's lights. Um, the, the other thing too, so like if you're, and they have different like things too. So like if you're using uh, EV, you can turn out. You can. There's lots of things here in the render, like bloom. Uh, actually, you know, I'm not even. I'm not even going to bother talking about that. We're just we're we're recovering, recapping lights and things like that. Um. So okay, I'm gonna hit zero on my number pad. Let's just see. I just want to do a real render here. Let me do a render image. Let me save this. Does this one save? Uh, I think I can just Control S. Save this. I'm going to save this as in spring 2022. This will be like chair one. Oh, I have to actually save the Blender file too. <laughs> Image, save, Alt S, I guess is what it is. So this is chair one. Save image. Okay. And I just want to also do one with uh, with EV real quick. So let me switch to, or with cycles. Let me switch to cycles. Uh, I'm also just going to, oh, denoise is on for render. Okay. Don't change anything. So you can do render, render image, or hit F12 on your keyboard, F12. So you can see that the cycles render takes a little bit longer because it's working a little bit harder to get it done. I think it's done. Where's my... This, this actually changed from the last time I did it. All right, let's save image. Oops. Oh, it's not done yet. It's still going. Okay, hold on. So the, the, this is good. this is going to take three minutes. Hold on, I need to stop this. Uh, cancel that. This the the render settings were set too high. So just like be very careful. Uh, I need to. If you're going to render with cycles, turn the sa max samples down. Change this to like. So it's at mine set to four thousand ninety six. Change this to like. Uh, Oh, well, you can set a time limit too. I'm gonna to change, set my time limit to like 30 seconds. Okay, there we go. Because that that was gonna take like three or four minutes to render, and I don't want it to take that long. So let me try again. F12. All right, so I'll let it go for 30 seconds, and I'm gonna save this. You get, you get diminishing returns for sure with this kind of stuff. Well, and don't worry, we'll cover rendering a lot later. Okay, saving image. So just like oh, I just want to show you the difference real quick. So here's chair one. This is what chair one looks like, and here's chair two. So you can see that it's different. So chair two, you know, it has a little bit nicer shadows, and when when we get into materials and and more lights, you'll you'll even notice more of a difference. But anyway, know that know that those are there. Okay. It's already, it's our, we're near approaching an hour. So I don't even know if we'll get to UV today. Materials. No, we are going to get to UV. Materials, materials, materials. Okay, uh, I switch back to uh, EV. Okay. Let's put a material on our subsurf chair. Uh, Materials tab here, material properties. So I'm in object mode, I have my subsurf chair selected. I can hit the little beach ball down here. And let's create a new material. So we've got this new button right here, new. We are at material 001. Uh, we can just call this like chair material. So I, I talked about this before, Surface, the surface type, principled BSDF. Now, 
a principled BSDF can do everything. So a principled D BSDF like does it all. So there's lots of properties. Um, it's a good. It's definitely a good place to be when if you're creating your own material. So like you can change the base color. Like this is going to be a blue chair. Uh, or you know it's going to be like super shiny. So you can see like if I turn the roughness way down, it gets to be really shiny like that. You can see it's shining off the edges here. Let's just see what that looks like from the camera. Yeah, shiny chair. Or you know whatever. Turn up the specular. Turn down the specular. Make it metallic. It's a metal chair. Remember, be be careful with metallic. Um, remember with the X-wing. It's hard to light things that are metallic because the light just bounces like away. Um, but now let's look at this, some of these other things. If I if I twirl open, uh, if I click on principled BSDF here where it says surface, there are a few other things here that you might be interested in. So like uh, this one is glass. There's a glass BSDF. Um, now this is probably something you would want to uh, change to. It's probably easier to see in uh, cycles. Let me do cycles here like this. Yeah. So if you switch to cycles, you can see that it's really doing a good job with the glass. It looks, it looks like it's see-through. Um, Evie doesn't do glass very well. Uh, going back to my material tab here. Uh, you can even open this preview if you want to get a preview of it. Um, Tune might be something that you're interested in. So like Tune is has like pretty flat shading. You know, play with these a little bit. Um, velvet. Again, I'll, some of these I should say, I should just keep it on cycle so you can see the differences. Um, that's a velvet. So it's you can see it's like looking kind of velvety. It's kind of sucking in the light. Um, let's see what the Tune one does now when in cycles. Yeah, so Tune has like really high contrast. Um, the other one that I want to show you is um, emission. So emission is cool because it, it kind of acts like a light. <laughs> so like this is like a glowing chair and it can cast light onto the scene around it. So like you can up the strength like this. And you can see that now, hopefully my computer's not checking too hard, but like, and so this is an emission surface and it's casting light on the area around it. So like you can make this, you can make this like, you know, a blue light. Uh, and that's, you can change that with the strength. Um, just real quick. So like if I switch back to EV, it's probably, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't work with EV. So again, you're, you're starting to see, you're already starting to see why cycles is superior. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's going to slow down your system a little bit. So you can play with some of these things, change your, your render engine here in your render properties from cycles to EV if you wish. Um, but the final thing I want to show you with materials is using image textures. So let's, let's just go back to Eevee. Let's go back to Eevee. Let's make it simple. Uh, let's go back to here. Let's change this back to a uh, principled BSDF. Um, BSDF stands for by Oh no, what does it stand for? I gotta look it up. BSDF. I thought it was bidirectional scatter function. BSDF. Bidirectional scattering distribution function. So it's what it is, it's, it's a surface that can like bounce light off of it, basically. So let's make this a wooden chair. So like let's let's get into some real real materials here. And first, starting with uh, we have to start with just like a Google image search. We got to find a good piece of wood. I Googled BSDF, bidirectional scattering distribution function. Okay, while we're in the Google machine here, um, let's type in uh, wood texture. Wood texture. I want to find a good texture to uh, put on our chair. So, you know, when you're on the internet, like you know, there's a lot of bad stuff on the internet, a lot of poor things. But if you're gonna do, if you're gonna find textures on the internet, um, that's fine. I I definitely do it myself. Um, so just try to find stuff that's license free. Uh, here's my tips for Google image searching for textures. Uh, if you go to tools here. You can change the size and just change this to large. Um, 
the larger the, the image texture, the better. If you have something that's low res, it's going to look poor. Um, so find, find something that is a pretty high pixel count. You usually want something that's 1,000 1, pixels square. So like if you're on Google and if you click on one of these things, it sh usually shows you the size. So this one says it's 2,000 by 2,000. I don't always believe it. Um, some of these are like clickbait. Like, yeah, so this one is 1,500 by 1,500, but it has the watermark on it. Like all of these have watermarks on it. So just like f find anything that works. 1600 by 800. Uh, you want it to be a square too. It's Things play much nicer if it's a square. Dude, this one looks all right. This one looks pretty good. Okay, I found one. Find your own if you want. So uh, I'm going to right click here, open image and new tab just to verify that. Yeah, so this is like a pretty good, what, a, what, is, what did you call this? Like a, <laughs> I don't want to, I'm, I'm like, I sort of fancy myself a woodworker, but I don't know my wood types very well. Um, so I'm going to right click save image as, and I'm going to call this wood texture. You can see some of my personal photos on there. Uh, we're going to spring 2022, we'll save that there, wood texture, great. Okay, now let's put it on our chair. It's actually really easy. We have our chair selected. We are here in the Material Properties tab. We have our chair material selected. Base color. So we don't want our base color to be a color. We want it to be an image. So it's as easy as clicking right here. So don't click on the color here. You have to click on this little yellow dot here. And we can change our base color to a texture. And underneath texture, we want image texture. Okay. It changed it to black. But that just means that we, we haven't loaded an image in yet. So our base color is image texture. And let's open. So right, right here, underneath base, base, base color, image texture we can open and now just find your wood texture and open image and now our chair has wood on it <laughs> it's a wooden chair now it's not perfect and uh all the reason is it's trying to wrap a 2d image something that's flat around a 3d object so like i'm um, if you've ever tried to wrap a gift that's round you know you probably like had some awkward angles things where it was stretched a little bit so looking here so actually let me so this is this is a good time to go to material preview so right now we're in render preview material preview kind of uh removes the the lighting and you can see things plainly. I'm also going to hide our floor here like this so we can see underneath. So looking at um, our chair here. Uh, you know what? Okay. So I'm just about at time here. So uh, I'm going to leave it here at this. Um, but this, So this is a good teaser for, for next week's lecture. Um, I'll talk about how, how we deal with this in uh with our materials if you're using image textures um so next lecture we'll start with it's called uv so there's a whole uv editing tab up here and we're also going to get into sculpting next week uh for assignment three so uh continue to work on your assignment two remember your assignment two is to model anything maybe a chair maybe something else <laughs> probably something else uh have three lights in your scene have three different materials in your scene and uh render an image so uh you will submit your rendered image and your blender file to d2o uh just like a piece of advice, 
so getting better at blender and 3d modeling means you need to be practicing I sh and i shouldn't say you need to be you should be practicing you should be spending time in it you shouldn't you sh you sh i encourage you to do more than just follow along with me for an hour um in later assignments or in in your big assignments you have one larger assignment in the middle of the semester and your final assignment there is like a level of effort grade as part of it so um practicing and spending time is how you're going to very very slowly get more comfortable and get better at this so anyway uh next week we will zoom on the 10th of february we will look at your assignment assignments two together you'll be able to ask questions then your lecture next week will be about uv editing and sculpting and you'll be able to start working on assignment three but uh don't forget that you're the final deadline for us <laughs> the final deadline for assignment two is the 17th of february is it complicated look at the look at the course schedule there's the link on d2l it has it all laid out anyway that is all thanks for watching have a great week goodbye